pleasure to be here. I'm going to be talking about uh, and adding to what Mindy said about how Republicans are innovating and improving online. And I think the best way that I can talk about that is by showing some real world examples of a recent campaign that I just got off of, the Scott Brown campaign. And I know that this is a very sophisticated audience compared to other audiences that I usually speak with about this sort of stuff. So I've tried to extract the most untalked about uh, undercover things, I guess, that we did on the campaign to hope uh, to hope that I hope that I provide real value um, and uh, show you some of the things that we did. And hopefully it is innovative um, in your mind. So I got criticized on the campaign a lot for not um, advertising our URL. Um, and in my mind, it's not the 90s anymore. You know, we don't need to advertise our URL directly. I don't get much value out of that. The power of search is so incredible that when someone types in Scott Brown or even our opponent's name, our website's going to come up. So we started changing the way we advertise things, whether it's our push cards, the literature, the yard signs, even the advertisements at the end of our web videos. Everywhere we did, we pushed our text messaging system. That was information that, although a majority of the people might not get in the audience, uh, we would still net more value. We would get more quality data from that than we would if we pushed our website. So even a smaller percentage was more informed about that. Getting their cell phone was extremely important from the very beginning of the campaign because we knew what we wanted to use cell phones uh, for towards the end of the campaign. So Martha Coakley will be on 96.9 FM Talk right now. Call 617-822-1969 uh, with your questions. So as a conservative, I'm told that we own talk radio. But I was always told that in the sense of philosophical issues and in debate and in policy. But I'm more of a campaign person, and I wanted to to be more uh, have more of an impact on this medium of communications with the, the vote-getting uh, sense in the campaign world. So when we looked at talk radio, and we looked at how people can influence the debate by calling in, and we looked at text messaging, we saw a beautiful marriage where the new medium of text messaging with the old medium of talk radio, when you combine the both, it can provide some pretty powerful results. Why? Because the barrier of entry is so low. So if I send out a mass email to everybody and say, hey, call this radio station, the barrier of entry is a little bit higher because you still have to have somebody pick up the phone and dial the phone number. Whereas with a text blast, it's right there. So you could be stuck in traffic on 93 in your way into Boston and now all of a sudden be converted into an activist for the Scott Brown campaign on offense talking about the issues of Martha Coakley's on the radio. Now, when Scott Brown was ever on the radio, the same thing, we did the same exact thing. He got all positive phone calls, go Scott, go, you're the best. And we just dominated the airwaves by letting the grassroots users call in. We didn't have enough room for scripts, but that's fine because the people who are most likely to opt into your text messaging system are people who are gonna be pretty in tune. They're gonna be pretty educated and pretty into the campaign. And as a result, the, the talking points that were perfect. I mean, it was almost as if we scripted them and sent them out, and we, we had Martha Coakley on defense. And in fact, when she was on talk radio, she, that was that opportunity where she said Kurt Schilling was a Yankees fan. Uh, she was not comfortable, and she was even uh, aggressively attacked on uh, liberal talk radio shows as well. So this, this tactic was, was uh, very effective um, to add that campaign element into the talk radio world. Another thing that we did is we, I, we probably all in this room know about Google Blast for Get Out the Vote. Uh, we, we did Google Blast though earlier uh, for volunteer recruitment. So it wasn't just for Get Out the Vote, we did that, but we did it the Thursday before the last weekend of the campaign. And those dots represent our regional offices. So we, we targeted Google Ads around our regional offices so that we could tailor those ads for that particular office. So that when a user was, was online, they'd say volunteer for Scott Brown, it wasn't in some ad far off office in Boston, it was down the street or the next town over. And uh, these ads can show you, it says Danvers office or the Rentham office. So it did two things. One, it personalized the ad locally. And number two, it gave us a, a, a data spreadsheet on the back end that we could then uh, give the person running that particular office access to that data that was pouring in to prepare for the last, the last weekend. So Jack signs up. The rule that we had, and I think this is a good demonstration of an integrated operation, is that when somebody did sign up through our, our targeted marketing to volunteer in that particular office, uh, the policy of the campaign was that the field staff had 24 hours to call those people. It's just like a salesman, uh, salesman job, or, or when you try and unfortunately buy a car and you go to a, a car lot. Uh, it, it's a very aggressive pitch because you're hot. 
you're hot at that moment of wanting to buy that car. When you sign up online, you're hot at that moment for wanting to get involved in that campaign. So the 24-hour policy was, was connecting uh, the data that we were getting online to the field people running that particular <coughs> office where they could then call up Mary Sullivan who lives two towns over and get her in and sign her up for shifts. What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing the next day? What are you doing the next day? All the way down to election day and not giving up until you get some type of commitment from that person. So we've, we've heard about the money bomb. Um, and it, we obviously weren't the first to do it. You know, Ran, uh, Ron Paul's campaign did it. Uh, other campaigns have done it. Uh, a lot of campaigns have done it since. But I want to talk about the voter bomb, which I, I think was a really cool concept because uh, the money bomb is all about collectivizing everyone to participate in this one activity of a surge money on one day. But there's also another day that everyone does something, and it's called voting. So the voter bomb was a concept not to replace our get out the vote operation. It was to enhance it and to make it more personal. So you would go into the voterbomb.com and you would put in your name, your address, your contact information, and it says here that you will personally pledge to Scott Brown how many of your friends you will be responsible for to bring into the polls on election day. This was important because it was a special election uh, when January 19th is not a normal day to vote. And we capped it at 20 because we didn't want it to get ridiculous and have somebody you know, go in and say, I'm going to bring in 500 of my friends to the polls. And so we capped it at 20, and we, and we counted it by county so that counties could then compete with each other. And this is a rotating map of where the county uh, votes are at that time. So we had around 4,000 people, and we launched this on Saturday before the Tuesday of election. So we only had a couple days there um, to, to push this out. And we had just around 4,000 people go in and pledge over 34,000 of their friends to be responsible to go vote. Now that's 34,000 phone calls from a, a caller ID that you know you like and you trust. The best form of advertising is from somebody that you know you like and you trust. So this was just an effort to tap that address book among our grassroots activists and our whole, our whole whole during the whole campaign, even on our push cards, we talked about don't vote alone. Um, so it's, no, it's not enough for you just to go to the polls and vote now. You can just go through your address book and, and, uh, and magnify your vote tremendously this was a fun opportunity to try this online, and I'd like to try the voter bomb concept again with another campaign where we have more time to do it than just the last four days of the campaign. Uh, we, we did online ads outside of Massachusetts on center-right websites saying call from home. Um, and uh, this, this brought in 7,295 users who made 142,000 uh, phone calls. Uh, this was just another way to expand our grassroots operation of, of, contact, of personal contact. Um, and uh, people would make calls from their uh, computer, and they would do voter ID on their computer. And um, it was a, a very effective for the campaign, especially considering the circumstances that January 19th in Massachusetts, you could have a blizzard, you could have your activists locked in. We wanted to have people equipped and able to mobilize voters from the convenience of their own home. We, uh, we part, part of we had a good problem in the sense that those those Google Blast ads the Thursday before the last weekend of the campaign generated a tremendous <coughs> amount of, of sign-ups into our local offices. We had people standing online waiting for two hours just to sit down and make phone calls. Now, while people, some people say it's a good problem to have, that's a two-hour investment not given to the campaign to get votes. So uh, we we devised this this iPhone app. It also works on Android and BlackBerry. As it's a web app. It's not a, just an iPhone app. Um, where we could upload our GOTV list and it, and it used your GPS sensor to determine where the closest household is that you need to knock on to remind them to get out and vote for Scott Brown. Um, and we, 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 we met with a person uh, the last weekend of the campaign. If someone told me that last weekend of the campaign we would be doing an app like this, I'd say you're crazy. But when you saw the, the lineups outside of our offices, we needed to get people off the lines and not wait for walkbooks because creating walkbooks is a tremendous uh, logistical process it takes a lot of time and when we launched this on Sunday before Tuesday of the election we had a thousand people immediately download uh, this app uh, my last point here is and this is what I learned from the Brown campaign and it's not a, a, a point uh, a, a, or a lesson about technology as it is our perspective my perspective has now changed with with volunteers. When volunteers come into the office, traditionally it's, you know, can you make phone calls? Can you lick stamps? Can you stuff envelopes? Can you knock on doors? After the Brown campaign, when I met with people in the lobby who were coming to volunteer, um, they, they brought a tremendous amount of other skills because we're not content consumers anymore. We're not just limited to being content consumers. We're not just watching uh, the...